Well, good day, everyone. Great to be with you all, and welcome to this celebration of the Holy Eucharist for Ascension Sunday. For those joining us in person, great to have you here. Thanks for being here. And for those joining us uh, virtually online, thank you for being here as well. We're so glad to be able to share this worship with you. Our service begins, as always, on page 185 of your green book of alternative services. <coughs> Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord. Keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of his peace, and bring the whole of creation to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all these things under his feet and made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 47 which can be found on page 764. That's Psalm 47, and it can be found on page 764. And we'll say it responsibly by the half verse. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout, Shout to God with the cry of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great King over all the earth. He subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, <clears throat> the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the his horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations, God sits upon his holy throne. 
the nobles of the peoples have gathered together with, with the people of the God of Abraham. Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, and, and he is highly exalted. And together we pray. Blessed are you, God of all the earth. You have called us out of every people and nation to be a royal priesthood and citizens of your holy city. May our words of praise call the world to turn to the joy of fellowship with you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to stand for the proclamation of the gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So, today we are marking uh, Ascension Sunday, the Feast of the Ascension. Um, it is a feast day, a day on the church calendar that is very near and dear uh, to my heart. Um, I think uh, every, um, every Christian has another Christian who's really shaped them and formed them. Uh, and uh, for me, that would be my dad. And he was ordained a priest in the Anglican Church of Canada on the Feast of the Ascension 40 years ago. So the 40th anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood uh, will be uh, tomorrow, uh, when, we, when we actually get to the uh, proper day of the Feast of the Ascension. So, uh, the fe so the Feast of the Ascension is very special for me, and, I'll be, uh, uh, and I give special thanks this day uh, for my father's uh, ministry and witness. But the Feast of the Ascension, the event of the Ascension, is one that can be um, a, little bit, a little bit strange and maybe a little bit hard to wrap our heads around and figure out what it might, uh, what it might all mean uh, for us. Um, and so to begin, I want to suggest that in order to think about the Ascension, we have to move from a Greek philosophical understanding of heaven and earth to a biblical Jewish understanding of heaven and earth. And you you know, if you've tuned into the service enough times, you've probably heard me, you know, batter on, you know, banter on about this point before, but it is worth emphasizing because it's so crucial to understanding what is actually going on in the scriptures, especially when an event like this happens. A lot of us have just kind of default to uh, what we might call the Greek view of this um, clean, hard and fast dichotomy between heaven and earth. Um, uh, you can see that working in, say, the great philosopher Plato. We're in this fallen, uh, we're, we're in this kind of shadowy world of imitations, um, and, but where, where the good stuff, the real stuff is, that's the realm of the forms. That's kind of where you want to go. And so under that view, under that way of thinking, the, uh, the best that we can hope for is to be uh, rescued from this world of matter um, and brought up uh, into heaven. Um, uh, now, if you try and apply that thinking to the ascension or to any of the other events in Christ's life, you'll run into trouble uh, rather quickly. Um, and that is uh, partly because uh, the, uh, that is not the view of heaven and earth that the scriptures assume. 
um, the view of heaven and earth that, uh, that the scriptures assume, um, and that would be familiar to a first century Jewish person like Paul, uh, is uh, a little bit different. And on that view, heaven and earth are impinging upon each other in all kinds of times and places and ways, and the goal, the best state to be in, is not to be removed from the earth into heaven, the best state is for heaven and earth to be married and brought together. That's the goal. That's the goal. And when we think about the ascension in those terms, I think we can see some pretty interesting and useful things about it. So on that, uh, on that note, what's happening in the ascension? Well, Christ has, uh, Christ has been, has, you know, the resurrection has already happened. Christ has visited and appeared bodily to the disciples, um, leaving them with no doubt as to, uh, as to the, you know, the bodily, physical character of the resurrection, that you know, he's not a ghost, he is, he is, he is corporeal. Um, and at the ascension, we are told that Christ is, Christ is taken bodily into heaven. And that's a very important point. If you are operating under the Greek worldview, you would expect his soul to finally leave that troublesome body and be taken into uh, the heavenly realms. But that's not what happens at all. Rather, it is Christ's body, Christ's matter that is taken up into heaven. And what's special about his body? It has been redeemed. It's not just a, it's not just a body, but it's, it's a body, it's physical matter, it's flesh, that has been redeemed and perfected. And his assumption into heaven is the final uh, sign that that is the case, the final sign that the matter that is his body has been uh, redeemed and perfected. So, in other words, what do we have? We have physical matter entering into the, earth, in, entering into the heavenly realm of God and the angels. We have earth meeting heaven. Now what happens after the Feast of the Ascension? We enter a period called Ascension Tide, which is the ten days between Ascension and what? Pentecost! And what happens at Pentecost? We get the next, um, we get the next impingement of heaven and earth upon each other. Because what happens at Pentecost? At Pentecost, Christ sends the Holy Spirit from heaven to earth in tongues of fire to enter the lives of his followers. So, and that's why I want to suggest that we, uh, it's helpful to maybe see Ascension and Pentecost um, in relationship to each other as the church uh, encourages us with, the, uh, with this time of Ascension tide that we are entering. At the Ascension, Christ and bodily matter enter heaven, and at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, Spirit, enters the earth. In other words, we are given signs of where this is all going. That heaven and earth are not, uh, you know, are not uh, to be permanently alienated from each other, but rather that really the good news of the gospel and the end goal of everything that Christ has inaugurated is for heaven and earth to be united as one, and for eventually everything to be redeemed and sanctified and perfected in the same way that the risen body of our Lord has been. And that's helpful to keep in mind as we think about Ascension Day, because once you start to think about the scriptures in that way, once you have some of these concepts in your mind, you'll start to notice them everywhere. And you'll even notice it in a few minutes when we get to the Lord's Prayer, that most wonderful, precious prayer uttered by our Lord on earth. What does he say? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Not, get, you know, get me out of earth so that we can finally go where your will is done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Earth as it is in heaven. That is the wonderful and exciting <coughs> truth and promise that the Feast of the Ascension points us to. That heaven and earth are no longer estranged, 
They're coming together, and in the fullness of time, they will be unified as one. <coughs> so where does that leave us? Well, again, this is where I think it's helpful to see Ascension and Pentecost as connected, because, the, uh, because this is really where we enter the story. Um, the, we now, care, we now uh, are part of the project of unifying heaven and earth. We, the church, are witnesses to the promise of that reunion. We are a sign of it taking place right here, right now. And we are part of bringing it into fullness by proclaiming the news, by allowing ourselves to be transformed and sanctified through prayer and sacraments, and by inviting others to take part in that transformation too. So we also have a very important role to play in the good news of Ascension Sunday. So, may we go out and boldly participate and proclaim and anticipate the wonderful marriage of heaven and earth that we get a glimpse of, a foretaste of, in the uh, miraculous ascension of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our service continues on page 189 with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to adopt an attitude of prayer comfortable for you for the prayers of the people. Today I will be using litany number three, which can be found on page 112. Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Rachel, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, that they may, re that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Charles, our king, for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this city of Brandon and those who live here, the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, men and women, that you will show your goodwill to all. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of our society and those who minister to them, that you will be their help and defense. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those preparing for baptism and for those recently baptized, that they may be strengthened in the faith. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sight from earliest times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witnesses. Lord, hear our prayer. Our service continues on page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us share that peace. 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 Alexis, can I call upon you to bring out the gifts and assist me with administering? Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Savior Jesus Christ has promised to be with us until the end of time. Accept all we offer you this day and renew us in, the tran and renew us in his transfigured life. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our service continues on page 196 with Eucharistic prayer number two. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me.
Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Fraction sentence number 8, on page 213. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share your resurrection. Live in us, that we may live in you. The gifts of God for the people of God. <coughs> Thanks be to you, God. The body of Christ, the Shed. bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Eternal giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds always in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.